What's going on guys? Week 5 here. Meat prep is going, going pretty strong. No real uh, complaints about anything so far. Uh, this week is kind of not necessarily a deload week. Um, it's going to be more of a transition week. So transitioning back into pulling from the ground and uh, transitioning into uh, wrap squats. So bench press is going to stay the same, just progressing week to week on that. Um, if I feel like I'm getting beat up, I'll kind of slow it down a little bit. But with that being said, everything went well. Did 445 for um, four sets of four this week uh, for a, a rep PR, volume PR, whatever you want to call it. It's really kind of insignificant um, at this point in time. It's just a good indicator of progress. And what I like to do is kind of go back to you know my last prep and see kind of where I was at. Uh, long this time and kind of where, what weight I was moving and how things were going and how things were progressing and when I look back to my last prep everything seems to be moving a lot better and with a lot more weight so that's a good sign for things to come biggest thing is and that I see with a lot of lifters and this is more of like a, a general coaching thing that I see going on a lot is you know, say if you just competed and you totaled, you know, 1,500. Well, for some odd reason, you feel like you can compete again in 12 weeks and you should be able to get 1,600, you know, with these 100-pound jumps. And what you start to do is you start to add up numbers in your head of the bench, the squat, and the deadlift to equal that total. And then the whole meat prep, you spend chasing those numbers, which can lead to a lot of frustration, can lead to a lot of missed reps, and it's typically gonna lead to having a really bad knee. So what I like to do and what I like to tell my lifters to do is kind of just take it week by week. Don't really set anything up. Don't really have um, a general, you wanna you want have like an idea of what you're capable of based on the way training's going. But that's based on the way training is going. You don't want to have an idea of what you're going to do um, just because you think that's what you should be progressing to. You know, So you take training week by week and you review what you did, you review how it felt, you review how it moved, and then you make your next week training plan based off of the last week and the progression style that you're used to. So if I did my sleeve squat in 700, Right? A lot of people would generally typically think, all right, well, next week he's going to put on the wraps and he'll probably go to 730 and 7 whatever, you know. But at eight weeks out, seven weeks out, if I jumped all the way to 700, my ceiling for improvement is not going to be as big because I can only go so far because I know what I'm capable of. You know, if I thought I could squat 850 at a meet, then yeah, 725 would have been a good number. But in my mind, I know that, you know, the weight that I'm going to try to attempt at the meet needs to be progressed to that. So if I think I'm going to squat 750, if I started at 725, where do I move week to week in order to get there? So what I did was I just started off lighter. Kind of like I said, it's a transition week on both the pools and the squats. And now I have something to build on week to week. So if I'm too busy chasing numbers, if I had in my head, you know, oh, I'm going to squat 850 this week, no, no problem. You know, that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go from squatting 727 to squatting 850 because apparently I think that I found the secret to uh, adding 120, 130 pounds to my squat. So then I start chasing those numbers, thinking that I should be doing X, Y, and Z to get there. And what's going to happen is physically... I'm not strong enough to do that and I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to start, weights are going to start feeling heavy, I'm going to start missing reps, and I'm going to get super frustrated and then I'm going to keep chasing things and I'm going to keep doing things that are outside the scope of actual reality and what I should be doing at the moment. You know, and a, a, good, a good way to combat that is to A, have training partners that um, don't just tell you how awesome you are and kind of get you on track. B, have a coach that kind of can guide you along the way and make sure you follow the plan and or C, compare yourself to your last meet 
and if training's going really well, if your offseason's going really well, and you compare week 10 of this training cycle to week 10 of last training cycle, it should kind of give you an indicator of where you're going to be. You know, so expecting a 5 to 10% increase in your overall total is not a bad way to go. Training a little bit sub-maximally leading into a meet is not a bad way to go. You know, but I feel like a lot of guys, they'll start putting on heavy weight that they're not ready to handle. And uh, they'll either start doing um, technically poor reps or they'll start missing reps. And then it's just going to cause quite the, uh, the catastrophic effect to your actual training plan. You know, so set up a plan to where you're kind of starting off with moderate weight and you want to think, okay, if I want to squat X, and I want to bench Y and I want to deadlift Z, where do I need to be and what's my progression leading into that? And then that's where you should start. You know, you don't want to go on Instagram and you don't want to go on YouTube and you see your favorite lifter and you're like, okay, well he totals this and he's doing this, so I should be doing that if I want to total that. You know, you can only do what you're capable of doing and if you have a steady methodical approach to it, that's going to lead you to your best result. All you can do on meet day is the best that you can do. If you're going there and you open up too heavy because you want to hit this number that you're just not capable of doing, you're going to end up going one for three on a lot of your lifts and that's just going to lead to an overall bad day. You know, so learning throughout the training cycle and learning throughout meet prep of uh, being able to just kind of take what the day gives you and progressing week to week it's going to allow you to make better attempts on meet day. It's going to allow you to have a better overall feel of exactly where you're at and what you're capable of on meet day. And that's kind of the basis of a lot of your training plan should be to build confidence and to set you up in a perfect spot come meet day to where you can go, you know, seven, eight or nine for nine and have a good meet. And that's kind of the way that I've done things. And then you can see, you know, some things like accessories I'll push a little bit heavier. Um, so like singles and doubles. But now that you see that I'm doing the actual competition lifts, you'll see a lot of sub-maximal lifting and building week to week and making adjustments as they come throughout the week. And Doyle does the same thing. He knows what he wants. He knows what he's going to hit. And he goes in that day, hits it. If he doesn't, um, which typically never happens. He'll, uh, he'll try to figure out what's going on, lighten the weight, and get some more practice reps, and he won't continue to do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. You know, and he'll just add basic linear progression, add a couple pounds a week, and then go from there. So hopefully this helps you guys plan out your next meat prep, off season, whatever it is. And uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, guys, take care.